Okay, now I'm going to show you uh, defensive zone movement. So we're going to snap the ball again. Okay. And remember I talked about having that guy stacked over the center to get that push. You can do that. In this case, this went okay. But let's just say, um, for the sake of this demonstration, the purposes of this demonstration, let's say he slid off of that or something and he went there. Okay? Now, why I told you that that's somewhat risky is, um, and I'm pointing at this guy here, I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. You can see now that he is not a base length behind the line, of, uh, not at least a base length, approximately a base length behind the nearest, uh, the lineman, the, the defensive line, I should say. He's too close. Now, what do I mean by he's too close? And we say we snap the ball, and now the offense does its backfield movement, and it decides to do center. Quarterback stays within the center, decides to move that one guy, right? So we're going to move this one guy, and we're going to pivot that guy, right? And uh, I'll show you more about receivers, releases uh, in a second, but for right now, I want to focus on this, um, the defensive backfield movement. So I really just want you to pay attention to what's going on in the defensive secondary. Hold on while I get this where I need it. Sorry about that. Okay, in the secondary. These guys here, all of these guys are at least a basement behind I said the, the defensive line, but I meant the line of scrimmage. And on this board, that's about three yards, two or three yards. Let's measure that. Uh, it's about two and a half yards. This is a really big board. But on the average board, it would be about three yards. So about three yards back, right? These guys are behind that imaginary line. That line's about right there. You can see that. So these guys, their base is behind it and they're within the tackles. These guys can move anywhere they want on the field. So, now again, only three of these folks in the secondary, and the secondary is defined as basically, again, being about four or five yards, give or take, excuse me, three or four or five yards, give or take off the line of scrimmage. Um, three of these guys can move. So um, if we're looking at this play the way we got set up, and let's say uh, one thing we do is we release receivers. In the case in uh, the HEFL, when, if you can see that, make sure you can see this. When you release a receiver, the receiver is released to, uh, um, let me back up. If a base is making contact with a defender's base and you're an eligible receiver at the line of scrimmage, the receiver has to release to the side of its helmet as it is in relationship to the defender's helmet. And by that I mean the helmet here is on the inside of the defender. So you are allowed to pivot and slide about one base in don't do this, just a little, right, about the base and, and you can pivot to release that receiver. You could also leave that receiver there if you want him to block. You may not want to release him because this guy is engaged, he's stuck. And maybe you have a step on him like that and you just say, okay, fine, my guy's going to outrun him. I want to leave him there. That way he can't adjust. So, because remember, once you release that receiver, this guy becomes unengaged, and because he's unengaged, now he can adjust. So I'm going to release him again, slide him, pivot him. Again, it's got to be to the side of the helmet. You can't do that if he was on the inside. So I'm going to release this one. His helmet, if you can see this, pull out. That 
Excellent. This receiver here, his helmet is to the inside of the defender. And so he can release to the inside. Pivot. Right, so we're gonna re we release those receivers. All unengaged defenders after the snap can pivot. Pivot. Remember, these guys are in the secondary, considering the secondary, because they're at least about a base off the line of scrimmage. So they can do zone movement. Now this is the trick with zone movement. Only three of them can move. The three, however, can move anywhere on the field. That's a change we have. Um, we used to say that they could move only within the tackles. Now, since we're limited to only three guys can move, because you used to be able to move four, five, six guys, they can only they can move anywhere they like on the field. However, for them to be eligible, they would have had to have been within the numbers. If they were outside of numbers at the beginning of play, they are not eligible to move. So if those guys would have been outside the numbers, they could only pivot because they would have been unengaged. They wouldn't be engaged, but they couldn't move. So I'm gonna put them back where we where to start. Why am I bringing it up? Why is that important? Because when you line up your receivers on offense, you may want to move your receivers to outside the numbers. So let's start this over again. These guys, and outside of numbers is considered, in this case, below the numbers. In this case, above the numbers, right? Outside the numbers. Basically, anywhere in this paint. Now, this is also about the home field advantage to a certain extent because different boards are going to have uh, different where well, your numbers are spaced. It's, that's something you can decide as a coach. Please do not come to this league with numbers in the middle of the field. That's not going to work. But and it would not be smart to have numbers all the way here because that would be not good. But this is basically a standard board. Most boards look like this. The numbers are about right here, so it works on different size boards. So, but let's say this guy was on the outside of numbers and they were engaged, right? Now, what's the difference? This guy is stuck. Even if he was back here, even if these guys were back off the line, they could only pivot. They could have only pivoted. Another thing I want to point out too is that you can no longer do this. We used to allow every receiver to do this, even if he wasn't engaged. They could pivot, they could slide, release either way. Now if the receiver is not engaged, they can only pivot. I mean, sorry, yeah, they can only pivot. If they were engaged, they could have slid because he'd have been outside of his helmet, so he could slid to the outside. But because he wasn't engaged, he can only pivot. Now, these three guys, let's go back to where we had it again. We had these guys here, right? So let's say we snap the ball, release, release, an offense, right? Defense. Pivot. Let's say let's say this was right after snap. Moves him. Moves him there. Okay. And pivots these two a little bit. Offense call set. No more moves by the offense. Defense then pivots. Pivots. All unengaged players. This guy is coming free, so he's taking that. This guy right here, right? We can move three guys, we said. I mean, for the sake of this, let me, let me actually... Uh, say I had moved this guy over here. Okay, that was the one guy I moved in the backfield. And I pivoted these two. Pivoted these two, I moved that guy. The defense, in the defensive zone movement, the defense can now take up to three guys and move them anywhere on the field. 
What if you want to double team the seeds? You could do that. What if you want to um, try to take away this run, this guy? You can do that. Now that looks amazing and great. Like you said, man, that's a great defense. This guy's going nowhere, this guy's going nowhere. Took away this guy. Two problems. You got one guy back here now that can't move. Because you moved three guys already. You moved one, two, three. This guy's stuck. If you look at, we talked earlier about the one and play and the cutback. Let's say the offense says, I'm going to give it to the quarterback. Him right here. They run to the line of scrimmage. He got the block. Because he's beyond, behind the line of scrimmage, the quarterback can cut back. And I want you to see this. This guy can block this guy. That guy's blocked. Look where he is. He's way back here. Because you haven't, you're still doing a cutback, you can adjust all of these players before you, before the ball carried across the line of scrimmage, you can still adjust an offense, all unengaged players, and you can see that he's going to get him. And so now the quarterback has got a nice little scene right there he can run at. And he's got a situation where he's going to have with the quarterback about four, five on three. And this guy's out of position. Because if he says, I take this receiver, he can do that and run. Now, if that's the case, if he wants to take the receiver, then the quarterback will say, I'll just keep the ball, right? Or what if he says, no, i got to go stop the quarterback? Well, the receiver is going to come free. So let's see what happens with that. I stopped it a little too quick, but let's say I would have uh, let it go a little bit longer. Okay, this receiver's got a step now. This receiver's also open. And because you haven't crossed the line of scrimmage, you can still throw the ball. So I want to show you how the defensive zone movement works and how you have to be careful where you place your players uh, when you do that, remembering that you can only move three.